Hey everybody, it's Matt from Eastwood Company. We're here doing another live technical broadcast in the Eastwood Garage. Uh, for any of you guys that, or gals that haven't watched this before, the idea of this is to be as interactive as possible and also very informative. So if you have any questions at all about today's topic will be regarding TIG welding, uh, about welding in general. Uh, we have Randy sitting over here. You've seen a lot of our videos. He's running the chat and he'll be firing questions to me and he'll also be answering a lot of your questions live. Uh, during the broadcast, so feel free to send him some messages. Uh, also, like, share, uh, send this out to your friends. Uh, we want to get as many people watching us as possible so that we can uh, you know, keep this good thing going. So today's topic is, uh, we're going to be talking about TIG welding, but specifically I'm breaking it down into TIG welding, torch, angle, and just how to hold your torch. A lot of beginners that we come across, uh, they start to get the idea of how to TIG weld and how to lay filler rod in and, and get a puddle going. But a lot of times, uh, as soon as the, a beginner gets out of, say, table welding, where they're just welding something that's really simple on the table and they're fixed, they forget about their torch angle. And you start having problems where the, the filler material is melting before you need it to, or you're burning into your panel and, and burning holes. A lot of that can be attributed to just simple torch angle and how you hold the torch. So uh, starting from the beginning, uh, most common way, I'll twist this here, uh, to hold your torch, I like to think of this uh, the section right here, the main body of the torch, as like a pencil. And I hold it like I, as if I was holding a pencil and writing. You forget about this, this part here. But, you know, if I was writing, just like that. So I like to hold the torch like that. Another angle you can see a little better. Uh, that's probably the most common way to hold it. Uh, there is instances in pipe welding and things like that where you may hold the torch a different way where you're going to actually hold the whole entire torch like this or like this. Um, just depends on what you're doing. But for most automotive uh, and the work that you're doing around the garage, you're probably not going to be gripping the whole torch like this. It works great if you're doing what's called walking the cup on like tubing or piping. Uh, you know, holding it like this works well. But when you're doing more finesse work and uh, you know, most of the work that you're going to be doing in automotive, you're going to be holding it probably like this. Uh, if I find it gives you more control, you can actually move it around a little easier. So that's the way that I like to hold that. So we're going to go over the table here. And I'll show you just on the table as I sit down uh, some of the, the um, ways to hold the torch and then how to move it along the panel piece here. Well, so we got a scrap piece here that we're that we're doing some samples on. So, like I was saying, we're holding it like uh, like it's a pencil, like this section going through here. This little finger switch. We're using Eastwood TIG 200 today, uh, AC-DC model. Uh, our TIG welders come with a little finger switch that is an on-off switch. I like to use it a lot for out-of-position welding. But basically with this switch, you can adjust your amperage on the front of the machine. Use the switch and it'll give you that full whatever you have on the machine. So if it's 110 amps, hit the switch, you're going from 0 to 110 immediately. So if you're doing something where you need to vary the amperage by using the pedal, uh, I don't tend to use the switch as much, and in those instances, I just kind of grip the. I just use the switch as a grip, and I click it down. It's not going to do anything. So when you're on the workpiece here, I'll turn it hopefully so you guys can see. Um, so let me grab some filler rod here. So if we were in an ideal best situation. Uh, if it was possible, you, know, you could weld straight up and down like this. You know, our torch is just going directly down into the workpiece, and we're only heating a small area that's directly underneath the torch. Um, that's going to create a really small puddle. Uh, it's also going to heat up the smallest area. The problem with that is, is it's very difficult to get your filler rod around the cup and in to add the filler. Also what's going to happen is when you add that filler, it's going to lay onto the piece, melt in, and it's actually, for a split second, it's going to be a little higher than the workpiece. Um, so it may rise up and actually touch the tip of your, 
of your tungsten, stick it up and it's going to stick everything together and then you're going to have to stop and start over. So you don't want that. So what you do want to do is you want to tor turn your torch a few degrees back like this. So the back of the tail section is going to turn away. So I'm left-handed. I should mention that. I, um, we get questions about that from time to time. I hold the torch with my left hand, so I'm going to be moving left to right. So I will be turning the tail end of this torch back to the left like that. So I'll turn it back a few degrees, and now what that does is it opens up the front of the, the tungsten here so that I can actually see a little better what's going on, and I can add my filler rod right to the front of the puddle and move along. And I can just add filler rod as I go like that. So if we were over top like that, I would be having to shove the rod in underneath and keeping the torch. I'd have to almost lift the torch up, which isn't good. Um, so that's the technique. If you turn it maybe 10, 15 degrees back, maybe a little more is okay. Any more than this, you're going to start, the more you lean it back, you're going to start, it's going to start shooting the arc across the panel, which will start to heat everything up. If you're welding something that's thin, like sheet metal, it's going to, or aluminum, uh, it's going to start heating up that area. It's just going to blow a hole through, or it's going to start warping the heck out of it way ahead of where you're welding, which you don't want. So then you don't want to have it turn back too much, if at all possible. Do have any, any questions along the way so far? Um, so far, we have MIG questions. So okay. I'm answering them here. But oh, okay. um, oh, hold on. We just have one TIG question come up on on uh, YouTube. Um, just about uh, the, the, the torch tip, um, would you recommend round or sharp or is there a specific shape? Okay, so we had a... Christian a on YouTube wants to know. So Christian on YouTube had a good question. He asked about the, uh, the shape of how you sharpen your tungsten or your electrode, uh, if it should be pointed or it should be bald or rounded on the end. Uh, the answer for that is you sharpen it what's going to best work for what you're welding. So the sharper your point is, the more direct and fine your, your arc is going to be. It's going to, it's going to follow the pattern of what your elect, how it's ground. So if it's like a funnel shape to a point, it's going to come out right like a point like that, and it's going to be the smallest, most fine arc you can get, which 90% of the time is what I personally like to do because I like to be able to move my puddle around where I want. Uh, you can uh, put a little flat on the end of it, or you can put a little ball on the end, uh, or rounded on the end. What that's going to do is it's going to keep, it's going to give you more of a wider pattern of your arc, which is going to heat up a larger area. That's good if you're trying to cover a big area or the weld seam you're trying to fill. You want to heat both sides of it rather than move your torch around to to do that. You can make a wider uh, you can make a flattened edge on this or a, a rounded edge on it. It's going to give you a wider, fatter uh, arc pattern and also your puddle. So it's going to allow you to uh, heat a larger area at one time. A lot of what I do is my, my arc to be as small as possible. So uh, just out of habit, I generally sharpen my, my, um, my tungsten or my electric pretty much to a, almost to a sharp point when I'm done. That's a, good, that's a good question. We may, uh, we may in another live video may go a little further into that. We'll grind a few different points and show you guys exactly what it looks like um, just to get a better idea. But unfortunately, I'm not prepared to do that today. I only have one tungsten in here. Hopefully, I don't stick it to the piece. Uh, any other ones? Yeah, we have one other question. If you want to go over it now or maybe later, um, when would you use a gas lens kit? Okay. Uh, so we had a question about when... When would we use the gas lens kit? Uh, so this, this torch here, I have a gas lens kit on it. And what that is, is there is a screen that's inside of here, like a mesh screen that allows the gas to come out and kind of fog the workpiece. Gives you better coverage of your shielding gas, uh, which keeps your weld cleaner and it's more efficient. So you don't have to turn the gas up quite as high. Uh, so you can stick the tungsten out further and have better gas coverage with a lower pressure. Uh, so I use the gas lens 100% of the time, I would say. Uh, it gets better coverage. It gives you a better weld. There's really no downside to using uh, a gas lens, in my opinion. Um, they do make, we, we sell a kit, which I probably have one floating around right here. I always keep them on the, on the welding cart 
because I never know when I'm going to drop my torch and shatter one of these gas these cups. So we always like to keep a, a kit right on hand there. So you can get these. Um, I should probably open that for you, shouldn't I? So you can get the cups in different sizes. So if you run into an instance where you're doing something really odd, you can get these where they, they, the gas lens, the end of the gas lens forms more of a cone, uh, or like a, a, a smaller diameter cone shape. So you can get into something, a tighter area. But the nice thing about the gas lens is, and I haven't really had to, uh, any need to do that in my experience, but um, you can simply just put this tungsten further out and turn your gas up a little bit. Within reason, I mean, we're not going to stick five inches of, of tungsten out, but you can most definitely stick your tungsten out even further. So there's really no time that I wouldn't use this unless I was in a pinch and, you know, I, I didn't have a cup or something. But it's always good to have used these. There's really no downside whatsoever to using this. Only thing I would say is when you're a beginner, um, the traditional style, what I call the traditional style, the, the standard um, consumer, the standard parts inside the torch, they don't really go bad. Uh, the gas lens for a beginner and you uh, have a weld spit on you or something like that, it happens more often when you're learning. The screen can get little, little pieces of, of um, contaminant on the screen and the screen can go bad, which you have to replace it out. So uh, when you're first starting out learning, it might be good to just use the one that comes with the machine get yourself comfortable and then you can switch over the gas lens so that you're not paying the higher price for it. But that's a good question. I know I went a little further into it than you asked, but. So, all right, so uh, thank you for the questions. If you guys have any more, feel free to ask them. Uh, Randy's asking, is even answering MIG welding questions for you guys. Uh, I'm talking about TIG welding, but he's happy to answer anything additional for you guys to just give you some, some pointers. So. Like we talked about, where I was left, left off at is the angle of the torch. If you have it pointed too far, it's going to shoot out onto the workpiece. It's going to hit, heat up a larger area. You're also going to have problems with melting your filler rod before you're ready. This is really important with aluminum. Um, if you're welding with aluminum, it has a, lo a lower melting temperature, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to affect it even more than with steel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up some work pieces here and we're going to have Joe come around the side here and he actually has a lens for the camera that we we pop on and then we're going to let you guys see what we call under the hood so you guys can see what it looks like and I'm going to actually change my torch angle to show you guys what it looks like so you can see what happens and hopefully you'll be able to help identify when you're having problems. So I'm going to get set up here. And as Joe's getting set up, if, if there is any other questions, Randy, feel free to shoot them to me and I'll answer them. But I'm going to flip this machine on. Um, yeah, uh, none at this time. I okay. guess that really pertain. We'll get into welding. So again, I'm using the foot pedal here. I'm not using the finger switch, so I can just grab right on and squeeze that switch. It doesn't hurt anything. Put my gloves on. So I got a long, first thing we'll do is I got a long work piece here that I'm going to weld in the center of that we just use for samples. So you guys can see. Let me know when you're ready. Already. All right. So I'm going to try and weld here. I have to keep my head back so that Joe can get the shot real well. So a little difficult for me to see exactly, but I, um, let me show you here. So getting the puddle started. I'm adding my filler rod. The front of that puddle there, like we've shown in other videos. Now, the first thing that tends to happen with beginners with the torch is they start magically lifting the torch like this. 
and holding it away from the workpiece and stuff just starts going crazy. You can see how far that arc is jumping. You're losing power, losing amperage because it has to jump so far. It's also heating up a bigger, bigger area, heating up the piece that we don't need. So you want to drop it back down and we'll get back to adding the filler like we want. So that's the first thing. You just got to keep that mindful. That's one thing that we find that happens. My glove was getting a little hot there because we're going real slow for you guys so you can see what's going on. Move down a little bit here. And now we're going to show you with the angle. Um, I'll show you torch angle. So we're going to start straight up, up and down. Let me know when you're ready, G. All right. So right now I'm straight up and down. It's going straight into the workpiece. Um, it's difficult for me to get in there without touching that tungsten. So you turn it a few degrees. And we're doing pretty good. Keep your distance the same. Now the other thing that happens is guys start turning their hand like this. And that's getting hot. I had smoke in my fingers a little bit because it's heating up the workpiece. You can even see here uh, on, the, uh, on the panel, it's heating up such a large area in there by me turning my hand. I can't even hardly hold it there just because we're putting so much amperage into this piece. On top of that, we're spreading that amperage and heat across the whole entire panel, which we don't want. So that's not good. So we're going to we're gonna actually, I'll do one more Joe so these guys can see on an actual piece here, like a welding, a, a weld joint. So I'm going to tack these together real quick. And uh, then we'll do another one for you guys so you can see how important torch angle is. All right, so I just tack the ends of this together so that it doesn't lift on me as we're welding. We'll get this moltenly hot piece. I don't even know if that's a word. Moltenly. Away here. Any other questions we have? Let me check. Uh, not at this time. Okay. We're gonna, I'm going to do one more weld here for you guys to show the torch angle. Joe's going to come around and get that one um, up close because I wanted to show you guys on a weld joint. And then and I actually think that when I was showing you straight up and down, it might have contaminated that tungsten a little bit. But we're going to show you one more on a weld joint. And I'm going to move the torch around a little bit to show you how it changes, how quickly and easily it, it can change your weld puddle. Uh, but if you guys have any other questions, now's the time to ask them before the end because we're going to do this weld and then answer any questions and we'll probably wrap up for the day. Uh, feel free to drop us any, any uh, topics you'd like any of us to cover in future broadcasts because we'll also uh, we'll respond to that as well. So... Mm -hmm. Are you guys getting shots of the metal when it's finished? We, we had a question asking, but it may have been before you were finished. Sure, we could show that work, that other one I did. Um, we'll pull that back out. Uh, it's really hot, so we just wanted to push it out of the way so it didn't get in view. But we'll show you that one, and I'll actually describe to you where you can see where I turn the, um, turn the angle of the torch. You can see what's happening. Okay. So I'm going to start at a normal... Normal angle here. All right, so I'm doing that. Now I'm going to turn my torch the wrong way. So I'm angling it too far back. And it's 
cutting into that top piece real hard because of that. So let me see if I can bring it back here. All right, so we're gonna let this cool, and we're gonna we're gonna show you about these pieces. That was a good request because sometimes if we forget to do that, that's so hot. All right. So we got our piece here. I'm gonna grab some filler rods so you guys can see. I can use my filler rod as a pointer here. Put the bottle up. So, the first one that we did was over here. And you can see in uh, this first one right up here, you all right with that? Uh, it's pretty hot. So me holding it probably won't be a good thing. So this first one up top here, I'm sorry, that was the second one we did. This first one up top here, um, you know, so we were welding along and then right about here in this area, this is where I lifted my torch angle up off of the workpiece. And you can see how the, the, uh, the filler rod is kind of sitting proud or sitting on top of the, the piece and it's not actually melting into the metal. So it's not melting into our parent metal because we we're losing amperage and it was melting the filler rod before it was even uh, ready to be added to the, to the puddle. So, you know, that in there, that's no good. That's just sitting on top of the workpiece. Then what I did is I dropped my uh, torch back down and then I started adding filler rod as we went here real quickly along till the end. So you can see how just that little section there, you can really read these welds and see what's going on. We got some black kind of contaminant around here. So this piece, I probably didn't grind it down well enough. So we were getting a little bit of uh, contaminant that was floating around the outside there. It was coming into it. Uh, the top one here is the one we did. We could see where I turned the torch. I only did a couple dabs of filler and then we turned the torch and in here it's just a big crater. You can see how it's opened up real large and just opened up on us and it's just burning. We weren't adding enough filler rod because uh, we weren't adding filler rod way out here on the other side. It was kind of difficult to add filler rod. We were adding it to the center of the puddle but it was heating up an area all the way out in here which is no good. So then uh, so all that was with the incorrect torch angle. You could see how wide of an angle that's that's hitting versus say in the beginning here when we had a nice, we had a tighter uh, puddle in the beginning there. Then I did this one here on an actual piece. It's a little easier to, sh to, to show you guys what's going on here. So this is where the beginning here where we started and a decent color in there. And you know, adding a filler rod, we're staying pretty close to the edge. There's a little bit we're burning off there. And then, actually, let me see. Let me turn this. See. I'm going left to right. Okay, yep. I'm upside down, so I want to make sure I was pointing the right, right direction. So this is before I, I did anything with the torch up until here. And right about here, in this area here, I started turning the torch. And if you look at the, where it's starting to cut back into the, into the piece, uh, we were pretty much the same through here. And then in here, it started cutting back into the piece. You can see how the heat progressively got bigger in there. And it's heating way out. But you can see our puddle got bigger here because the dabs of filler rod are bigger. It's flowing it out even more, and it's cutting back into the top piece here even more. And then the end there, a little more difficult because I had so much heat into the piece, I had to, I had to actually speed up here at the end and add, and add a little less filler rod and move a little quicker in here. But you can see we, we came back, we're not cutting into the piece as much there, 
and the, 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 uh, the actual puddle is about the same width there that we're laying in. But it was difficult. Once you start heating the piece up that much, sometimes it's hard to bring it back because you already have so much heat into the piece. Um, in one central area, it's, you're, you're fighting up the rest of the, the panel. But that's where you could really see in the center there where, where it actually, the, the puddle widened out and got larger. But that's some close-ups just to show you what happens. Uh, hopefully the under the hood shots really helped you guys. You could see how the, the arc actually started splaying out and going across the whole workpiece. Um, that's what I want you guys to keep in your head when you're welding. When you start seeing that, when you're welding something, if you're welding out of position or something that's round, you may have to change the angle of your torch as you work to keep that torch angle right so it's not shooting across the panel like that. Any questions before we, uh, we finish up here? Yeah, we have, we have one um, last question sure. on Facebook. Uh, if you're welding pieces at 90 degrees, like a T, okay. is it, um, is, would it be the same as this, or is it something you should show? They're just you know, wondering if it ends up being the same. Okay, so somebody asked if it's the same when you're welding uh, on a T, um, on a T joint or a 90 degree joint, if the, the, the process or the procedure is basically the same. I don't think I have any pieces cleaned here to show you guys, but the, the process is basically the same. You don't want to turn that torch angle too much because um, you start having the same exact problem where it's melting too large of an area. You want to melt right in, down into that seam and work your way up out from there if you want to cover a large area. So the process is, is the same, the way you hold the torch, the angle. It's all basically the same. The only thing that will change um, is your stick out of your tungsten may change because what sometimes I'll do on a T-joint or an angle joint like that is, um, I don't have a good way to show this. It's a crude way of showing it, but I'll show you guys. Oh, that's actually, I can hold it now. Look at that. All right, so what I'll do sometimes with a T-joint is I actually will rest my cup. Um, and I, so I'll rest my cup on the two pieces once I tack weld them, which means you have to push your, push your tungsten your electrode in much further than I would with what we were doing before. But what I'll do is I'll actually lean it on both pieces like this, and I'll, dra I'll drag my cup across the panel. And all that does is just help me, ke keeps me more steady. So at that point, you're just dragging right on the workpiece. So that's the only thing that would change, but you're still at the same, the, the same thing where you only want, um, you know, like a 15 degree setback away from it so you can get in there and add your filler rod like that. Um, if you start turning it on a hard, heavy angle like this, you're going to be shooting your arc way out into here. You're going to be heating areas that you don't want to. You're trying to weld right into that seam there, so you're going to want to keep it angled right there. So that's the only thing that would be different is just if you're resting the cup on the actual workpiece, you may need to push your electrode in a little further so, since it's so much closer. Uh, that would be the only difference. But otherwise, you keep that angle about the same. But that's a good question. So that's all we have for questions today. Uh, hopefully that quick little tech tip for you guys was, uh, was helpful. And you guys can take that to your next project and I'll help you make a better weld. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll catch you next week.